Legendaries in Guild Wars 2 are not only very fun to do, they are prestigious, but also they are pretty profitable to do, as you can sell them to other players. You're essentially transforming your in-game time, your spirit shards that you can sell to other players, your karma that you can sell to other players, your map condition that you can sell to other players, in gold. And then, get it for yourself. You can also, of course, you know, bind it yourself and look very cool, but, you know, hey, you can also sell it for a good amount of gold. And you can sell Generation 1 and Generation 3. Gen 2 cannot be sold. But which one is best? Which one is better for you to sell? And should you sell them in the first place anyways? Well, let's talk about it and we'll get to an answer. So let's turn for more content like this and let's get into it. First, let's talk about which generations uh, they are and uh, what they entail in terms of how much you have to craft them, how much you have to do and what you have to do. First one, Generation 1. This one's require a gift of battle. This is, I'm going to mention only the things that it cannot be bought because you can always just bought the items, buy the items, and whatever, right? Uh, Generation One Street require a war versus world gift of battle. Uh, there you go, gift of battle. A gift of creation for the full world core tier completion, which is a good amount of songs. All of the songs. I'm not sure how many there are. 25 explorer songs. A lot of songs, right? 25. Um, obsidian shards that are easy, very easy to do. Blossom shards, which is 200 spirit shards, very easy as well. Um, and the Mystic Clovers, typical thing, yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. You also need, um, you also need, uh, usually most of the time, to get some currencies from dungeons in order to transform those into a gift that you will be able to use in order to craft your legendary in the first place. That being said, it's pretty, it's, 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 it's very straightforward. It takes a lot of time, as, you know, uh, map completion for the whole, you know, this, this whole map completion takes around probably like 14 hours. You probably can speedrun it for like, Probably under 12, but most people will take 13 to 14, maybe 15 hours to do it, right? Uh, that being said, you also have the um, what is it? the starter kit that you can get from the Wizards Vault now that will give you the precursor that you will need that you can buy from the from the game, from the trading post. Uh, the gift of that specific, um, that specific um, legendary, which will usually until the dungeon then you have to farm, so you will not have longer have to do this. And a gift of might or a gift of magic, uh, which are pretty, you know, expensive. So this actually got a good amount of, of gold. I actually made a little Excel sheet and the star kit usually goes around 468 gold, more or less, you know, depending on the legendary, in terms of how much gold you're, you know, saving up and getting from the starter kit. So pretty good. Now, uh, legendary generation three uh, need other things. They only need a gift of extrusion from the EOD zones, which are only four, as you can see here. Gift of Saturn Province, Gift of New Canaan City, Gift of Echo Vault Forest, and Gift of Dragon's Earth. Only these four, which takes way less than the 14 hours that these 25, you know, zones give you. Okay, this is way less time. And you can do it multiple times with the Lantern system. Once you unlock a full map, you're gonna be able to, um, what's the word? Light these lanterns in order, to, and if you get all of them in the in the zone, you'll be able to transform it into a gift of this specific zone. This more or less talks around like three to four hours, so it's not it's way less than the other one, right? Way less than the 14, 15 hours that it will take you to do the map completion. That being said, you also need the blessings of Jet Empress that are essentially purchasable for five hundred Imperial favors each, which is a big amount. Uh, that being said, if you're doing metas or just on the audio songs, you will get them. You will get them very easily. The only way that you get improved favors is by doing events or metas, as I said before, right? Uh, so overall, it seems like Gen threes are way easier and way faster, right? Well, kind of. Let's go into it. So first, we have. Well, let's talk, start with the Generation Three. Generation Three does not have a circuit. They're sellable uh, for around twenty four hundred gold, but the amount of I let me rename as sellable mats so the amount of materials that it will ask you for in terms of gold it'll be 1400 gold more or less right uh so subtracting the 1400 gold from the sell price it'll you'll get you'll make around 981 gold each time you sell one of those that being said you have to do you know gift of battle and gift of creation gift of battle will take you just like the generation one uh both uh need a gift of battle probably around three three hours uh, may a bit more. Uh, so, uh, and the gift of exploration from EOD, probably around... Probably, I can do it in two hours, but most people probably will do it in three hours. 
uh, total amount. Oh yeah, and that's you know overall six hours, right? Now you also need the Imperial Papers, which uh, I was making a few calculations uh, while doing my train, and I figured out that while doing Saturn, for example, I was getting 90 Imperial Favors plus 20 Ritz, which are essentially 100 Imperial Favors. Uh, why is it IP? It's Imperial Favors. It's I. Uh, there we go. So around more or less 200 Imperial Favors per meta. So 200 metas, 3,000 Imperial Favors is what we need. Uh, divided by 200 um, are 15 metas more or less, and each meta is around 30 minutes, uh, more or less, so 10.5 hours overall. Now, of course, you're going to have to wait around in between metas, and some might give you more than other ones, and honestly, for me, Imperfers have never been an issue, because I do a lot of metas, I have way too many for me to ever sell them, so it doesn't really care. For me, it just, this 8 hours just don't, do not exist, and this might actually be one uh, a case for you, you maybe have done so many that you don't care at all about this Imperfers. But, if you do need them, and you need to farm them, yeah, you're going to have to farm them, you're going to have to do a, a lot of metas, and if you don't like them, it might feel like a farm. Now, if you go to Generation 1, we have the starter kit, which t takes uh, 468 gold from the 1200 gold that you need in order to invest, in order to make it. So, uh, you know, Generation 3, one, generation three asks for 1400 gold, sellable mats, um, you know, from materials that you have to buy, Generation 1, 1200. But you have the starter kit, so this costs 468 gold out of this one. That gives us, in terms of profit, 904 gold. 16, uh, our almost 700 gold is going to be the sale of a generation 1, and the profit is going to be 900 gold. Uh, now, for example, I also tried and checked uh, uh, the profit of, um, of a legendary that is not in the starter kits, and it was around 600 gold, as you have to pay for a lot of the sale of mats. So even if the prices of the um, gen starter kit generation, uh, generation 1 legendaries is going down in price, it doesn't really matter because the starter kit is so good. You know, it's still better to use the to craft this ones instead. Now, in terms of time, as you can see here, we have 11 hours of of um, of farming, and this is because you need the gifts of battle, which is around three hours or whatever. But, and this is a very important but, whenever you do the whole map expression from Corteria, you know you don't actually get one gift of expression. Expression, you get two. So technically, technically you will get, you know, you will get one gift of exploration in around 7 hours. So this gives it to, um, this is like 14 hours. So, overall, considering the gift of battle might be a bit longer, or the gift of exploration might be a bit longer, I put it at 11 hours just to be safe, you know? So, 11 hours, overall, way more than the, what the map, uh, the exploration part of, um, the expiration part of this one is, of Generation 3 is, and way more, than, but um, but way less if you consider the 8 hours as well, because uh, of Imperial Favors. Because if you do consider that Imperial Favors is something that you have to farm, it's going to be overall 14 hours for the Generation 3, but 11 hours for the Generation 1. So if you rather do a, a gift of expiration than farming EOD meta events, it is probably better for you to do a Generation 1. That being said, it is also important to say it's also important to say that in these 11 hours of you farming, you will get a good amount of materials. Tier 6s, tier 5s, tier 4s, well tier 4s are not that important, but you're gonna get experience as well, spirit charts, because it's a lot of good, it's a good amount of time of you playing the game. So, even, th and honestly, the only things that um, EOD maps give you uh, are probably just Imperial Favors. In this case, you're gonna get a lot of materials, so I would have to calculate a bit more and actually do a full run of generation one uh, of map expansion to see how much gold I get, but honestly, it probably is kind of profitable to do the completion map completion itself, which is kind of interesting. That being said, it seems like both are pretty good in terms of making gold. It doesn't really seem like one or the other wins. Yeah, you don't have the imperial favors. If you already have the imperial favors, generation three uh, is just insanely more powerful. Like. Just think about doing a six hour um six hour map completion and gift of battle, I guess, for 981 gold profit. That is very good. That is around let's calculate this. Say uh, 981 divided by six. 
163 gold per hour. That is insane, okay? Now, comparing that to the Generation 1 Prophet, it's gonna be 904 gold. It is already less Prophet, by the way. Uh, so, 82 gold. So, almost half. Uh, is very different. Now, of course, if you consider the Imperial Favors, as I said before, uh, 981 divided by 14 is 70 gold, so it's way less. It all depends on what your situation is and what you would rather um, what you would rather farm. It would be very interesting to see if um, if you compare all the time of you farming the Imperfairs and the map completion here in Generation 3, how much gold you get from those compared to how much gold you get from the Generation 1 just doing the adventures and the spirit shares. That would be a lot of work, uh, multiple hours. I may do it eventually, uh, but it's it probably is a lot. Um, because oh, and it probably would probably break even as well because the metas in in, in EOD give you uh, good rewards. You know they give you um, ambergris, they give you jade runestones, they give you a lot of stuff. So probably you would pro it most likely would break even. That being said, it is also important to say that well, profit is important, but sometimes making a legendary that you like is more important. If you don't like arena legendaries, oh no no, I mean making a legendary that you. You know, maybe not, you don't want to sell it, maybe you want to bind it for yourself. And that's completely fair, you know? Maybe you want the Arene uh, legendaries in order to make the variants, right? Um, right? Maybe you want to do that, uh, you know, and get all these variants, different colors. Or maybe you just want to make Sunrise, you know, and, and get worse too. Uh, <laughs> you want to make this because it really it looks very nice. And you want to start your legendary quest by doing the, using the weapon starter kit, right? Or maybe you don't have enough gold to start your legendary quest, so you need a starter kit in order to, you know, have enough uh, of a starting investment for you to, you know, start. And honestly, I think sometimes the starter kit, that's what it does. Maybe it's not only to make you make more gold and make it profitable for you to make the legendary in the first place, but give you a head start for you to, you know, be inspired and, you know, have enough gold to start your legendary quest, because legendaries are very expensive. Uh, and for me, it's easy to start any of them because I have a big account and everything, but not that's not going to be the case for everyone. That being said, tell me what you think. Tell me what you are going to make, a Gen 3 or a Gen 1? Uh, I think Gen 3, honestly, overall, is probably the best one to make. But maybe you disagree with me. Subscribe to the channel and uh, support me on Patreon if you want. See you guys around. Love you all. Bye-bye.